So what's the big difference on selling your stock music on exclusive libraries versus non-exclusive libraries? Now, for the record, I have sold as a non-exclusive composer to uh, libraries like Audio Jungle, and I have sold as well as a non-exclusive composer in the same library. I have actually changed my account from an exclusive uh, author to a non-exclusive author. I have shared this uh, journey of mine in this channel. Go and watch the previous videos uh, talking a lot about this, uh, especially on Audio Jungle and why I changed my account to a non-exclusive account. And the reason why is because when you are a non-exclusive composer, you can actually grab those music tracks and put them in different marketplaces, okay? Now, you can always join an exclusive uh, library or have an account as an exclusive uh, composer. And what it means is that you just need to compose uh, brand new, fresh music for that particular account or for that particular marketplace. Now, what I've done over the years is that I've composed a lot of music and I build a catalog or a body of work, if you will, and I usually join uh, libraries as time passes by. Uh, quite recently, I was invited by Envato Elements to join them. To me, it's like joining a new library now that I'm starting to upload music. And uh, here I want to show you very quickly what that means. What means is that I'm not composing any new music to upload to Envato Elements. And yes, Envato Elements is still part of uh, the, the Envato market, if you will. It's uh, not only a jungle, but it's the subscription-based uh, type of thing. But it's the same thing as joining a new library, in my opinion, okay? Because it's a, it's a completely different animal. It's not part of an of audio jungle per se, and, uh, and it's the same practices that I have done while I join a, a non-exclusive library. So what I have here, and I want to show you this very quickly uh, to, to see how quickly you can start earning money, because this is what happens when you join a non-exclusive library anyways. You have some music out there already, if you already are with a, a, a non-exclusive uh, library. And when you join a new one, let's say that you have 10 tracks, well, those 10 tracks, now you can upload them to that new library that you, ha you just have joined in. So here I'm on Envato Elements, and I wanna show you already that I have some, some earnings. Now, when you see these numbers, a lot of people out there might see that this is not worth it, it's very little, uh, but this is how it all begins. This is how I got started, even when I first joined Audio Jungle in the very beginning. I made one sale at a time, and I started earning money uh, slowly but surely this might seem like very little numbers to you uh, but i just joined in literally a week ago uh here are the takings and yes it's very little you can see how little it is i might get a lot of hate a lot of comments that what am i doing you know devaluing my music but you have to uh, consider that this takings is music that i have already done years ago and this music is already selling on other libraries, like for example, Pond5 for $47 and $97. Here it's selling for this because this is a subscription uh, type of uh, deal that the customers get, and this is how much I'm getting at the moment. I just joined in. I haven't done any work apart from just transferring music from, from one account to another because this is treated like a, like a separate account, if you will. Now, I'm, I got invited by another library, okay? And it's called uh, Music Grid. And this is part of them. It's in the Middle East. And they're targeting that demographics, if you will. And I, I did a, a podcast episode on why sharing your music on uh, social media is a waste of your time. And I'm showing you the tactics that I'm doing or the things that I am doing to create awareness of my music and my personal brand, if you will, as a composer. So you will get libraries contacting you. Okay, you're not going to go and reach out to libraries. Libraries are going to start reaching out to you. Go and listen to that episode of the podcast where I go in more detail about this. Now, these guys from Music Grid, fantastic people. I got a nice email saying that they have heard my music. Where? Well, on YouTube. Okay, so they heard my music on YouTube and uh, they want me to participate or to just pretty much start uploading there. It's a non-exclusive library again. It's very, very easy to upload their music, uh, to upload your music there. I don't have to compose fresh music. What I'm doing is that I'm just creating an account and moving those tracks over there. I can do a bulk upload if I wanted to, meaning that I can grab 500 tracks and put them all there. Or the way I like to do it better when I join a non-exclusive library like this one, or any uh, uh, non-exclusive library, is that I just select. 10 acoustic or 20 acoustic tracks in the beginning and then I move to the corporate uh, tracks maybe 10 or 20 of those and I start curating my own library so my own music tracks go through a review process or, or through a curation if you will 
and this is what I've done as well here on Envato Elements. Mainly all of these tracks, they're mainly uh, guitar based and I'm trying to work uh, in, in chunks of music. I don't upload, I don't just go and dump whatever. You know, I still curate my music when I join a non-exclusive library. And again, this is just for the purpose of, uh, of uh, the example here on Envato Elements. But Envato Elements, I'm treating it like a se separate library because it's a diff there are different takings for sure. You can see how little it is. Uh, and I'm still getting familiarized with what's happening here, how much am I earning, and, and uh, all of these little details. But uh, it, it's still money in my pocket, and this I'm expecting it to see, to see it grow. Okay. Now, if you don't agree with the takings that are so slow or very little or whatever, you know that's a discussion for another video. Uh, but those are royalties for you. Even if you get TV placements, uh, any, it's going to be very, very little. Okay. So, um, but, but this is just one of the many. I mean, that, that particular music track, I have it everywhere. All of these music tracks, I have them everywhere. So that music track has been composed one, and they're all on different libraries, Form 5, and, and, and you name it. But I'm very excited about joining this new library because this is in a different demographics and, uh, in the Middle East, and um, they seem to be uh, launching very soon. I love the interface. It seems very friendly and very quick to upload as well. And uh, I'm always excited about joining new libraries. I'm always excited to just put my music to the test in non-exclusive libraries. And I can always join an exclusive library or select one of my accounts to be exclusive. But that just means that that music track is just going to be locked there. And it, it might earn more, yes, and it might be more exclusive to the client or whatever. Uh, but when it comes down to stock libraries, uh, my motto and my MO, if you will, is to be non-exclusive all the way. Uh, and that's just because I want to uh, save time and energy, really, when it comes down to, to the composition of music. And if it's going to be an exclusive library, it's not going to be a stock library. It might be a higher-end production library, if you will. And something a little bit more exclusive, not only for the client, but for me as well. And say, okay, I really want to put a little bit of work on this one. And I'm going to compose just uh, an album of 10 tracks for that particular exclusive library. So it's not going to be like 500 tracks that I'm going to move into there. And, and they usually want some uh, small numbers of tracks to just join in and just compose 10 tracks and just uh, exclusively for them and see what happens uh, throughout a period of time. See if you get any placements or or any, 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 if you see any success really. With stock libraries, it's different. With stock libraries, you just compose and you upload as much as possible. And there's usually just throw as much things uh, on the wall and see what sticks. And that's why I love uh, royalty-free libraries and stock libraries because uh, I could just be creative. I can compose music every day. I can upload every day. And if it's non-exclusive, I've already done the music once. And I, even though I love to compose music, at this stage of my career, I'm more like a, I feel like a publisher, meaning that I have done the work and uh, I have done my compositions and uh, I still compose, I still write music, but all the music that I've done in the past, I'm actually moving it around and joining new libraries and say, hey, they have heard my music, they know I have music out there, they want me to join, they already know that they like my music because they have heard it, so all I have to do is just select my tracks that I want to move there and start uploading, easy, easy peasy. And the same was with uh, Envato Elements. Uh, they say, you know, just start uploading and I started uploading, curating my own tracks and hey, I have some sales. One dollar might seem not like, not, like it's not a lot, but all I had to do was just literally uh, move this finger, okay, select the thing on my uh, Audio Jungle uh, account and just move it to Envato Elements. And I'll share more about this in the future and see how this progress. Um, it's just one of those things. You can see this as a, something negative or something positive. To me, when I see this, even when I see $1 and I see how solid, I just get excited because it, it's a possibility. This is how it starts. This is how everything starts. You know, uh, for some libraries you earn a little bit more, but you know, uh, and different ways of, of getting money with your music. Uh, but this is just one of those. And I'm not doing anything. I'm, it's not like I composed the music and I'm only getting $1 for that. I did that music track years ago. So all I want to say is that there is, uh, I don't think that is if one is better than the other. I just say that for what I do and for what I teach to my clients is for them to, to go non-exclusive for many, many reasons. But uh, the main one is that they can just focus on composing one music track and put that same music track to the test in different marketplaces and see how it performs. As they are getting better as composers and as producers, they can work on their craft, 
But at the same time, when they get to the point where they want to approach an exclusive library or higher end production library, they have already have done some, some work. They already have a few tracks under their belt and they can feel more confident to approach those higher end libraries and, 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 and better jobs, I guess, if they're paying jobs uh, and, and be more confident about their abilities. And, and understand that when you join these libraries, it's not going to be uh, a crazy upload process of 500 tracks. It's just going to be in smaller numbers for sure. And, and, uh, and at any given time, it's just going to be an album here or there. And um, you can't just start submitting music like that. Okay, so it's a different way of the music licensing business, uh, which uh, you know a lot of uh, composers get confused, and that's why I'm I'm really specializing on stock libraries, royalty-free libraries like Pond Five, Audio Jungle, and the likes. And now I'm going to be joining this uh, Music Grid, which is going to be a, they're based in the Middle East or they're targeting the middle the Middle East um, community. And it's a whole new uh, demographics, and I think it's a fantastic thing because, like the same in Asia, you have Motion Elements, V5 Music, 100 Audios, all of these other libraries that they work in different parts of the world, and they specialize on different demographics, which is fantastic. So if they are non-exclusive, even better, you can join in as a non-exclusive author and have that same music track in Envato Elements on, on your Audio Jungle account. You can have it on Music Read, you can have it on Pond 5, you can have it on VFine, okay? On VFine, you can be exclusive author within China. So it's different mixes of exclusivity and non-exclusivity. Uh, but it's just, it's an amazing opportunity, that's what I want to say, okay? Regardless of what you choose, and I have friends that there are just exclusive authors on Audio Jungle and nothing else, and they, they seem to be doing very well. Uh, you have to really test the marketplace. That's the most important thing, and the best way to... to really test the marketplace is to have that same music track in different uh, websites or libraries. If you're somebody that is new to music libraries like Pond5, Audio Jungle, and even this new library that I'm just joining in, Music Grid, download my free guide, link in the description. And as always, rock and roll, and here's to your success. Mm -hmm.